Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. Good evening for those of you that are, are joining us in the evening. Whatever time of day it is for you, it is good to be here with you and to share with you this week. I want to share two passages of scripture today. Uh, they came to mind earlier in this week, and the first Psalm is Psalm 121 from the Old Testament, a well-loved Psalm that has been for sure a great help to, to many in, in times of trouble, times of distress, for people looking for assurance of God's help, his presence, his care. And the second scripture passage is one that came to mind as I listened to a worship song early in this week, not long after we heard the, the horrific news of what had happened last weekend, the tragedy and the loss of, of life for so many here in Nova Scotia. And we've been dealing with that and grieving that. Been in prayer much of the, this week. I'm sure many of you have been in prayer for those experiencing loss. The worship song that our second passage is based on is called, Is He Worthy? And we'll listen to that together here in our, our Zoom worship service. Uh, but if you're watching this brief message on YouTube, I hope that you'll take time to follow the link to that song that, that should be on the site that you're looking at. You may have to scroll down a little bit over to the left to find that, that link. But I hope you'll take time to listen to that song. It really complements what we're talking about today. The New Testament passage of scripture that the song is based on, again, is Revelation chapter 5. Again, if you're watching Zoom, you've already heard it read. Uh, but if you're on YouTube, you may want to pause the video and just read that for yourself. Revelation chapter 5. Now, Psalm 121. Some of you could probably read it from memory with me. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forever. To be truthful, I used to be a little bit cautious about reading this psalm in certain situations. As I would visit somebody in hospital, perhaps someone who had had a, a serious fall or someone who had been in a major accident or even someone facing end of life, I, I found that I was okay reading the first two verses. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. But I sometimes felt a little strange reading, he will not let your foot slip, or the Lord will keep you from all harm. Really? The reality of this psalm, however, and the reality of, of, reality of these verses is that they really aren't a statement of formal doctrine or even a literal promise for every situation. If you look to the Lord, nothing bad will ever happen to you. That's not what this uh, passage is saying. The rest of the Psalms and indeed the rest of scripture are really clear that those who look to the Lord are not always exempt, exempt from trouble or distress. And you know that many of you as Christians. Jesus himself reminds us of that. God causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. This psalm, however, as with many psalms, rise out of the personal experience of the psalmist and the Jewish community. The, the reality and the knowledge and the sense that God watches over us and can be trusted 
in every situation, not just the sense that he can, but the reality that he does and can be trusted in every situation. In all our coming out, in all our, our going in, or coming in or going out, I should say, the psalmist has discovered in life that when we look to the Lord, we find a footing that is sure, that is firm. We find a firm place to stand. Something, and I think you'd agree with this, that we need so much in these days. How important it is, especially in these days, to look not just to the situations around us, not to just look at humanity, it, its trials or even its successes, not just to watch the news, but to lift our eyes to the maker, the maker of the hills, maker of all the earth, maker of heavens. The psalmist has discovered as he looks there that he is helped in life, that he is given life by God, assurance by God. He's been given strength and a firm place to stand. Now, we don't know exactly what was behind the expression that the psalmist uses here when he says, I look to the hills. Simple words, but what, what's he talking about? The psalm is called, the, or the, titled in the scriptures, the, a psalm or a song of ascent, a song of ascent, thought to be used by the pilgrims as they made their way to Jerusalem for annual festivals or for the Passover. And so looking to the hills might mean looking to the hills around Jerusalem as they headed toward Jerusalem, as they ascended to that holy hill. That's where their help is from, where God is, where God is alive in the temple. Or it may be that the psalmist saw as he looked to the hills danger. And the hills in many ways did present dangers for them, just in traveling, but also there were threats of, of thieves and robbers in the hills. And so as they traveled, as he looked to the hills, he would be assured that his help, even in danger, came from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Or it may be finally that the psalm is referring to the hills because in those hills were high places of worship, idol worship worship of false gods. I saw many of those places of worship fairly recently in a trip to Israel. The psalmist would be saying, if that's the case, I look to the hills, where does my help come from? Not from one of those so-called gods, but from the very one who made the hills themselves, the one true and living God. And so we say, as we look around us, as we look at the false gods around us that we're tempted to base our lives on in a sense to worship. We look to those things and we don't find our hope, we don't find our salvation, we don't find a firm place to stand as we trust in those small g gods of our culture. But when we trust in the true and living God, the maker of all things, the maker of heaven and earth, we find hope. Revelation chapter 5 points us to that same living God who has all of history in his hands and who watches over us, helps us, even saves us for eternity, saves us from evil in the most profound way through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Savior that the Jewish people were waiting for in a sense that all creation is waiting for the Savior who is the Lion of Judah and the Lamb, the Lamb who was slain for us, and the one who conquered the grave. Revelation 5 praises Jesus, saying, You were slain for us, and with your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. I hope you know, as you're listening today, that you are among those people of this earth, of, of a tribe, of a nation, all people. We have been bought with a price through Christ who died for us. We've been purchased for life and for eternity, for relationship with God through Jesus. Revelation 
5 in many ways praises that God and we hear his praises throughout it. Jesus is described in John's vision as having seven horns, horn, the horn being a symbol for power, and seven eyes, eyes being a symbol for wisdom, and the number seven being the number of perfection. Jesus is perfect in power, perfect in wisdom, and is worthy of our praise in every situation. In John's vision from God, Jesus, through his sacrificial death for us, has all authority to open the scroll. What is the scroll? Well, one commentator describes the scroll as being that full account of what God in his sovereign will has determined as the destiny of the world, the future, God's future will and plans. Your future, my future, finds rest and hope in him, in Jesus, who holds the future in his hands. A pastor friend of mine described his struggle recently as being a grieving over the loss of the future. He's a planner and a dreamer, and God is using him in great ways here in our city, here in Halifax, to build his to build Christ's kingdom. But the future plans are blurry and unknown now. And there's some grieving in that for him. But that may be true for some of you as well. The future isn't as clear as it may have been. Future plans have been thwarted. Future plans have, we have to hold back from or wait, wait for. They've been disruptive. And I'm sure my friend would agree that though his struggle is real, he is also thankful, as I, I pray you are thankful, that he knows and trusts in the one who does know the plans, even Jesus. And he gives us that assurance, that firm place to stand, even in uncertainty. Where is your help coming from? Where are you looking for help? We can certainly help one another in many ways. And we're thankful for all those who God is providing to help us at this time. But our ultimate help, our solid footing in our going out and our coming in, our hope for the unfolding of our lives, the unfolding of history, even into eternity, is found, and I pray it's true for you, is found in the one who made the hills, all heaven and earth, the God who is in control of all things, God who came to earth in Jesus, the Lion of Judah, the Lamb who was slain, who conquered the grave. I want to just close by mentioning that I heard this morning a public service announcement on local radio here in, here in Halifax, trying to give hope to people struggling with staying at home and struggling perhaps with social distancing. And if I didn't know better, I could have mistaken it for the close of a sermon. It works. They said, have patience. Don't lose hope. A better day is coming. A day of celebration when we'll enjoy our freedom again. Through Jesus Christ and faith in him, place your faith in him today. Through faith in him, we have hope and help for today, but also for a future and for a coming day, a day of perfect freedom and joy. Where does our, where does our help come from? I pray it comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, the Lord of all eternity. He is worthy of our praise. Amen. May God bless you.